Welcome. This is called Love and Friendship. Love and Friendship. Yes, which you've got. Is that the official name of the show? That's I haven't official, been on for a while. Official. This is this show is Love and Friendship. This one, this specifically. And the one that follows you now is called God Talk. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Aha. Yes. Oh, and then the one saying. after uh -huh. that is called now it's called Oh My God. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Good. So good. So Mr. Uh, Mac is, is still coming. Yes, good, yes. good, 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 good. So this is we've bonded doing this. We don't see each other any other. It's, life works that way. Yes, that's. No, we 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 bond here. Yes. <laughs> Aristotle says some friendships are contextual. Yes. You know, if you're working with someone, you're their friend. But if they get to another job, you remember them fondly. But but you no longer interact. You no right? longer. We yeah. talked about that. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and so that's us. This is my contextual friend, Will. <laughs> I would say, though, that we have very good contextual chemistry. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. Yeah, better and better. So well, this will be challenging. Yes. Because I will be teaching... This is a book, we, Difficult Conversations. I will be using this book to teach rewarding conversations mm -hmm. at the Osher Institute in Tufts. Okay. okay. In January. Good. Feel free to sign up if you're a retired person or eventually want to be a retired person. <laughs> so, I'm kind of feeling out what the class will be like. Yes. And I thought the first class, which is you at the moment. Oh, my goodness. I didn't know I was going to be in class. Is there going to be a pop quiz? There's going to be a pop oh, quiz no. and a grade. And no. a, stay tuned. This is a dramatic show to see what will and will can grade <laughs> me as the teacher. They All do right. that too. They hand out course evaluations. Yeah. So I call the course rewarding. I wanted to call it rewarding interactions. Right. You know, because conversations is limited. There's interactions. But they changed it probably wisely so that people, actually enough people already have signed up. Mm -hmm. It's Friday, January 15th at Tufts Osher Institute from 4.30 to 6.30 in the evening and they still sign. Pardon me, lovely, that's lovely. So, you're my first student. Can you, I emailed this to you, I hope you got it. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an example uh, for around f up to four minutes, if you like. Oh, my, I don't think I need that long, but okay. Well, it could be way shorter. Of a rewarding interaction you've had either this today, this week, or in your life. I remember, this was several years ago now, and I was traveling uh, for work, and we ended up going on some kind of impromptu road trip across um, Northern California, kind of, because they had screwed up our uh, our plane tickets coming back from the convention we were at. Anyway, this is just backstory. I ended up at a uh, animal farm. That's not the right word for it, and I don't mean like the novel by George Orwell. I mean. Um, I ended up at this sort of, uh, not a zoo, but kind of a sanctuary for um, animals that were endangered, things like that. Um, and, you know, they had these things like, uh, uh, I, I don't know, these, these sprightly little foxes with giant ears. I forget what those are called. Silver foxes? No, no, no they're called like something like, they're called like foxitos or something. Wow. I don't, that's wrong. And these were real animals. Though. Yes, yes, yes. But like little, they're, they're tiny foxes, but they have giant ears. And they're in cages or running around? They were, they were in cages, you know, yeah. not, not small cages. They yeah. had running around space. But yeah, everyone was in, in kind of some kind of enclosure. Mm -hmm. um, maybe with like, you know, chicken wire, you know how they do those with a railing that they yes. can't quite get yeah. out of. Um, and I'm going through here and I see there's this one um, enclosure that it has an animal and it's a it's a feline it's a jungle cat and I don't remember the specific name of it um, but it's this very kind of majestic looking creature very large it's like the size of like a jaguar or, or even a tiger or something um, and 
it's an endangered species. There's, you know, very few of them uh, remaining in the wild or in captivity. And one of their distinguishing features is they have these very long, elegant claws, like razor sharp claws yeah. that they use to climb and that they use to hunt to feed themselves. They're very reliant on having these claws. Um, so what happens is sometimes in the United States and I assume other countries in the world, um, people who uh, are into having exotic animals as pets um, and, and kind of purchase them sort of on a black market type of thing, right? Will uh, will purchase these these big, majestic, beautiful feline creatures and defang and declaw them um, so that they can like, keep them in their whatever stable. And de defang means just to take their teeth out, take well, their, their claws teeth out. out. Yeah, they're, wow. yeah. Oh, Ooh. awful, awful. Talk about being tame. <laughs> I'll talk about being a house cat. So these, so these, so what happens is that it really, it's very, very detrimental to the health of these creatures, and they can't eat, they can't walk, they can't feed themselves. And they can't feel like they're who they are. Yes. So I'm in, the, I'm looking in this enclosure, and I see, uh, you know, this, and I read the story about how this um, particular individual had been brought over. Um, from, you know, the jungles by one of these, you know, poachers, not the right word, but one of these jerks that wants to, like, keep them in their home and, you know, rip out their claws and everything like that. And, and he, he's very ill, this animal is very ill. Its life expectancy had been shortened dramatically. It couldn't walk around. It could barely, it had to be fed oh. um, by hand. And it was just, it was, you know, it just really hit me when I saw, when I read what happened and I looked at the, at the animal and it just hit me in the gut, you know, and I, I audibly, oof, I made a noise like that. Oof. Um, and then I got a little self-conscious doing that and I sort of looked up and I saw sitting on the bench sort of close by, uh, an individual, you know, in, in middle, late middle-aged man. Um, a little overweight with a, a, you know, cap on. This is before the Trump era, but definitely someone who you could picture with a MAGA hat on. You know what I mean? Um, that, that type of look, you know? And, uh, in, in my interactions, I always, you know, sometimes it's, it's, you feel, I, w I feel, I felt, especially in that moment, self-conscious about having that type of reaction because I look at this guy who, who heard me, who overheard me. And, you know, this is where my, uh, prejud my prejudices and, uh, um, you know, uh, come, come into my, my social and cultural prejudices come in because I tend to think of people um, of that ilk that we kind of, we all sort of otherize in this world. But, but, but. Well, that's but, a great word, otherize. Yeah, yeah. Of, but, yeah. um. But, you know, the, that they probably are into, you know, guns and hunting and, uh, you know, eating red meat and, uh, uh, you know, all these hippies who care about animal rights, Puh, you know, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking this guy. But he's at the farm. But he's there. He's yeah. there, right? So, and then I, uh, uh, I, 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 I make this noise, I emote vocally and I kind of look up and I see this gentleman in the MAGA hat, even though he wasn't wearing MAGA hat, but that, that type. And he just says, he looks at me and says, can you believe it? Taking out its claws so it can't even walk or feed itself. And he was just so kind of distraught wow. himself. Wow. You know, and it was very, this very quick interaction, but it's, it's, you know, it saw, it, it was a time where my own, I think prejudices, prejudices that I have maybe culturally, but also um, my own self-consciousness and, and insecurity about myself. And, 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 you know, I think we all have these this thing growing up male in America or in most countries where you're not supposed to emote. Um, and that's the sign of weakness. So all of that kind of being challenged and just, and just kind of bonding with this with this gentleman who is clearly as, as, as distraught about what about what was kind of before us as I was. It's a beautiful story. Thanks. So, um, at the very end, you were saying you were not supposed to do this, you thought, like yeah. to emote. Yes. 
And then you discovered that it was cool. Uh, it was okay. It's okay. Yeah. And I think since that time, I was a little, a little younger then. I think since that time, I've become more accepting of, um, you know, that it's okay to feel. Wow. Right? Wow. Right? It's okay to feel. It's okay to have emotions. That wow. We, we don't have to be so detached from everything. And I think I'm, I, I have a reflexive want to, to, to be ta detached um, yeah, me too, as a self-defense. Because who knows what's going to come out? Yes. Who? A, a, a translucent carapace of ironic detachment. Wow. He, he's not just disassociated. He is has a transparent. Say that again. Translucent, transparent. Translucent carapace, carapace. Yes. How do you pronounce that word? Ca carapace. I think carapace. carapace. Yes, that's a that's a cape, right? Sh yes. Yeah. And um, you can see, but you think people can see through it, or you can see through it. Detached you bemusement. What are that? Uh, ironic Bem detachment. Yes, or bemused. Bemused. Yeah. Irony. Wow. So that was powerful. Let alone the shattering of your judgments. Yes. Have you been less likely to judge since then? No, I think I've become more likely to judge. But that's, <laughs> but that's because on the flip side of this, you mentioned a rewarding conversation and, and a challenging conversation. I just think that conversation has become so challenging in our current climate, everyone's kind of dialed up to 11 all the time. There's no room for any sort of compromise. And I, I, I think I'm speaking, you know, of, you know, of, of politics, but also culturally, you know, um, and I, I, and the way that we all express ourselves on the, on the internet, on social media and how decorum has really I, 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 yeah, I, I, our discourse has been degraded and, and polarized and weaponized in so many ways that I think all conversation or so much conversation has become difficult, conversation that didn't used to be difficult. And is that for you too or just more that your detached observer is seeing that? I think that that is for me too, yes. Oh my, what would be an example of... So I think I, I must I might keep to my own my own tribe too much, and I don't I haven't met that. I have certain friends who are yeah. like that. Well, do you have? Uh, I I have difficulty. You know, it's it's um, sure. I mean, it's, I mean, I I certainly have, and it's like you keep to your own tribe, and then what does that mean? You know. I mean, I, there's the, there's the, the Cambridge crowd is, yes. or you, I met you, you meet you in Cambridge. Yeah. I mean, we play on, on TV, you and I. Yes. Attacking each other's truths. Right. So to expect that, we won't disappoint you. I asked Will to be here to attack whatever truths I've noticed I haven't said in yet. So, <laughs> so but, but you have it in your life that you... I'm going to give you a, a chance to think about those kind of conversations. All right. And I'll share one just sim very similar to yours that you just inspired me to. Okay, great. I've said this a few times, but it, I, I hope it means a lot to me. I think it does. So there's a dance I go to, Dances of Universal Peace, which is Sufi dancing. Mm. And we, there's live music, and we do certain moves, spin around, look each other in the eye, hug each other mm -hmm, often in dances, mm -hmm. swing around and move to the next person to hug. It's very nice. While chanting, uh, there's no God but God. So, mm -hmm. Or, or uh, um, sacred songs from other traditions. Um, which is... Um, uh, there's not going to be war anymore. Um, that's a lovely sentiment. Yes. yes. So while we're doing this, this heavy, I think he was slobbering. I just have to remember <laughs> it. 
and gives me, you know, a way too big hug. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like it. seems so inappropriate. Yeah. I do not like it. Like it, I do not like Dr. Seuss. And so, but we go around. It's not that big a circle that night. Yeah. So he's coming again. <laughs> and just before he comes to me, he reaches down and takes the harness of a seeing eye dog. Ooh. And I realize he's blind. Mm -hmm. And when he comes to hug me again, I'm actually touched mm. that this blind man has come to join our circle and has, I guess, deep affection for me and others. So that, your story reminded me of that, how my spontaneous judgment. Yes. <clears throat> uh, can easily be exploded, as yours was. Yes. So those are, so what is that, what is in common with those two rewarding interactions? Well, I think they're both instances where uh, you and I respectively walked into a situation and had an immediate reaction that was maybe judgmental. I don't even mean judgmental really in a negative way. I, I think that we all ha make assumptions or suppositions or, or, you know, I think that's just, um, well, evolutionarily, that's, we need that for survival, right? Oh, right. But as, if I was Bill <clears throat> Kurtz, I would say, what do you mean not negative and judging? That was really just by both of us. It was, you, you think it was negative? I'll leave you out of it. For me, yeah. I thought this guy was inappropriate. A slobberer. <laughs> you know, in, in my case, I think I was projecting my own insecurities on some on a stranger based on superficial. So, yeah, that, that's a negative thing to do, but I'm not yeah. beating myself up about it. Oh, I'm, I'm you know, we're, we're celebrating it that we got rid of I think that's one of the things in common with these two interactions is we got rid of our judgments. Yes. So that's, and that's one of the um, guidelines in difficult conversation to um, uh, not judge and blame. Mm -hmm. To ask each other, what did we both contribute to this? challenge between us yeah and may, maybe <coughs> that's a segue <coughs> excuse me maybe that's a segue into a challenging interaction mm -hmm. well challenging interaction and I, I was, I was kind of talking about. I, I feel like interactions generally these days are so challenging. Um, Can you think of one? Well, when it comes to challenging interactions, I would mean one that does not have a happy ending yet, like the ones the two shared. It was. It's just remains. Or, or a challenging person mm -hmm. in your life that you're interacting with and just give maybe one example. I don't know. That's a difficult one to say. I mean, um, that hasn't had a positive outcome. I, I, I guess it's... It, well, what part of it do you think comes down to just um, miscommunication? I'll give you one of mine. Okay. You can tell. T thank you for. We used to, we used to look at fortune cookies. Will and I. That's right. And then, we, and he would say how dumb they are. All fortune cookies. And are I would, dumb. I would find the wisdom in them. So that was our show for weeks until you got, finally got tired of fortune cookies. 
And then we did it with quotes, famous quotes. <clears throat> That's right. Which was fun. Yes. And so now we're doing it with this uh, very popular book that sold, I think, hundreds of thousands of copies. Difficult Conversations. Yes. So this is a difficult person. Mm -hmm. um, a friend from Chicago. We call each other brothers. Mm -hmm. And my judgment is one of the things Charlie dislikes most is entitled people. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He's entitled. <laughs> yeah, oh my lord! Mm. He he was an only child. Oh yeah. Brought up by his father. His mother had passed, and he was the apple of his. But there's certainly some in inherent tragedy in there, right? I, I find it hard to, to 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 say that someone's entitled because they grew up without a mother. Well, no, not no, not because, but the father doted on doted on him and spoiled so on him. But isn't that? But but isn't that uh, in and of itself? I mean, there's no replacement for having a, a loving mother. Is is that being given like material things or 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 more like leeway and yeah, less discipline than, than other kids? That might make me have more compassion for Charlie, because it's difficult with Charlie. Um, Charlie will always expect things from me. Mm -hmm. When he was in the hospital with a um, colon operation, and I visited, he told my friend, Michael didn't visit long enough. Didn't visit long enough. Mm. And when I talk with Charlie, um, when he, Charlie calls me often asking for help or advice, mm -hmm. I give it to him. And, but, and then there's often, why don't you call me more? <laughs> Or, I need your help. Come, I'm not feeling too well now. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come more often? So, it's, it's, so whatever I do for Charlie, and it's not reciprocal. Right. I once asked Charlie to just send me the email of someone. He said yes, but didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have finally learned, after 40 years now, to feel what in another book I love, Nonviolent Communication, is Marshall Rosenberg, the author, said, before you have a conversation with someone, especially if it's challenging, mm -hmm. but really always, see if you can feel a heart flow between you and the other person. Yeah. And one way of doing it is to close your mouth, put one hand over your lips and the other on your heart, mm -hmm. and be quiet until you feel it. So it took me only about 40 years to feel that with Charlie. Yeah. You know, we can, because I, I tense up. I have rules with Charlie. Charlie, if I call you and ask you how you're doing, don't ask me for stuff. Right, right. And, but he will. Mm -hmm. And I'll say I don't want, and then I'll say I don't want to talk about that now. I'll say, come on, I really need it. So yeah. that's a difficult, and I love Charlie now. It's been so long. I mean, yeah since uh, University of Chicago days. So that's my example, I, and I'm I, waiting to hear your response. I think that's good, and it brings up, I think, a lot of things that I find in, in friendships that I find to be a bit more difficult. And I think one thing that I do, and even kind of pride myself on a little bit, is that I won't... I don't like to, anyway, discard friendships. I don't... Me too. Um, yep. And, you know, even though... So even though we're contextual friends, we're continuous. We'll, we'll we're continuously if, contextual. We'll see if we can get another context that the TV station closes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just on a park bench in the street? Maybe, we'll have to do puppets, you know, maybe. Maybe, we'll see. But, um, um, I, 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 you know, and, and even though that means, you know, you might not see one another all the time or or you know that context may have disappeared or not be there you know i don't ever kind of say that person's no longer in my life or very rarely do i do that um and in the time it does happen it's the other person's decision and you know you have to respect that too but um i think part of that also though is some of the things that you had mentioned where you know, sometimes you feel like you're there for the other person, but if this situation were reversed, you know, or I'll feel guilty because someone will have a problem or an issue that I didn't 
see coming or I'll feel like I wasn't a good enough friend for, I haven't been in touch in a while, blah, blah, blah. But then if I'm having a problem, I would never think to call them no, because, they, they, would, because no. they would be completely unhelpful. Yes, you know? they, yes, they would. Even then, it would be about them. Yeah, exactly. No. Even then, it would be about them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and I, I think that's a part of. I don't. I mean, it's. I think that part of that though is I, I. I think that if people are depressive or things like that, and they they don't have empathy is readily accessible you know sometimes that's be, that's 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 sad for them you know and i think that and you know we're we're reaching the end um of this yeah we'll be back i know you're riveted to this and you we, we'll leave you <clears throat> hanging to hear how will kurtz handles my friend charlie it, but it's i mean obviously everything's a spectrum and i don't mean to you know diagnose your friend or or all of my friends even though it's probably accurate with, with mental illnesses <laughs> um but there is an idea of like you know certain you know depression or 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 schizophrenia or or uh narcissism disorder or things like that is entitlement people... a mental illness that would be interesting <sighs> no but i i think it's a symptom of many mental illnesses yes yeah. Well, I can't wait. You got me riveted. I'm sure the audience will be. And we've got a call too, but I think they maybe would they need to call back after the break because we're about to go off the air. Yes. I guess so we can hear them. Maybe take take. Should it. I take it? Yeah, sure. Hello. Did we get it? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Hello. How to use it. Hi, Barbara. Hello. Hi, Barbara. We have nine, eight seconds. How are you? I love to hear the sound of your voice. 